Sanford has such a widespread impact on the community up here in Bemidji. In fact, the Bemidji State Beavers play at the arena just over my shoulder, Sanford Center. It's a beautiful facility that is just only a few years old, so that's just part of their efforts to help the community in Bemidji. Another part is a lot of the doctors staying involved in events like this, Hockey Day Minnesota. Katie Emmer is with one of those doctors, Dr. Mark Carlson, for a special interview now. Doctor, can you tell us how players or anyone who plans to be active in sub-zero temperatures should prepare? Well, that's the key word is preparation. So the most important thing is to plan. What are you going to be playing in? Is it going to be 20 degrees or is it going to be 20 below like we had this morning? So obviously dressing is a very important thing. And, and the important thing is layering because the insulation comes from the trapped air in between the layers. So that's going to keep you the warmest. And then obviously everybody knows fingers and toes get cold quickly. So those you need to keep them covered, but the most important part of keeping your fingers and toes warm is keeping your whole body warm because those will be sacrificed if your body starts getting cold. And then the last thing is the exposed skin. So if there's wind, if you're skating on the ice and you got skin exposed, that's going to freeze very quickly. So if you can cover it at all, you're going to be better protected. And I know your eyes are usually on the ice most of the time, but what would you advise as a physician to spectators about frostbite and hypothermia? Just common sense. If you don't feel well, you should go warm up. And frostbite signs would be some whiteness of the skin, usually an extremity like the tip of your nose or the tips of your fingers or toes. Uh, in terms of hypothermia, if you're starting to shiver, then whatever plan you had to keep warm doesn't seem to be working, and you probably need to change that plan. And what do you tell players, coaches, and parents to look for as it relates to concussions? I mean, what's the difference between a concussion and a hit to the head? Good question. And it's a tough call. So we look for three things. The first thing we look for, was there a mechanism of injury that would be suspicious for a concussion? So uh, a hard hit to the head is more concerning than someone who falls on their butt. Second thing we look for is signs of a concussion. Does the athlete look confused? Do they seem dazed? Do they seem like they're just not right? Are they you know, holding their head. Those are signs that we look for. And the third thing is symptoms. Do they tell you that they feel poorly? Do they tell you they have a headache? Do they tell you they're dizzy or the lights are too bright? And any one of those three is enough to make you suspicious that that athlete may have a concussion. And relating to concussions, what are the new guidelines in place for players to return to the game, essentially? A lot of the guidelines are the same. You can't go back until your concussion is gone, and you have to kind of prove that over several days of gradual, progressive, increasing physical activity. One of the newer changes in the guidelines is we're trying to get kids to be a little bit active earlier, because it seems like if they can have some light activity earlier on, even before their symptoms are gone, they may actually feel better and do better quickly. Doctor, thank you for your time. Stay warm and enjoy Hockey Day Minnesota. Thank you very much. Dr. Mark Carlson, sports medicine physician at Sanford Health.